oh my lord, that was violent. Okay, today we're talking about Ascentium's HTN, or High Temperature Nylon, which is a polyamide-based chemistry that has improved mechanical and thermal properties compared to standard nylons. Additionally, it's a super easy to print, pretty low warp material that has super high toughness and really good wear resistance. This material is actually a drop-in replacement for Delrin and has the best in-class slow moisture absorption, meaning you don't have to worry as much about drying it out in between prints. Now, some of the key features on this material are the better heat deflection temperature and printability than ABS and standard nylon. So this stuff has higher heat resistance and it's a bit easier to print than your standard ABS, nylon, PC, etc. Super, super tough, along with really good chemical resistance and solvent resistance. On top of all that, it's got really good wear resistance for use in gears and such. Now, general applications include jigs and fixtures like these, uh, electrically insulating components, electrical housings, low speed gears and moving parts, and other things like that. Now, where are you actually going to see this material in industry? Uh, frankly, the biggest thing that's different from nylon, regular nylon, which obviously you know is everywhere from zip ties to bushings, uh, this is specifically HTN, high temp nylon, designed specifically as a replacement for Delrin, POM, or acetal, acetal, however you pronounce that, the stuff that everybody who works in a machine shop is always asking for, which should never be 3D printed. This is the material you want if you're looking for Delrin. That brings up the question, what kind of machine do you need to print this film in? First of all, your nozzle is going to need to go up to at least 270, preferably 290 or even up into the 300s. Your bed temperature is going to be needed to be 70 to 80 Celsius, uh, and you're going to print it around 20 to 60 millimeters per second. For adhesive on the bed, our nanopolymer adhesive actually works fantastic, keeps it stuck down to the bed very well, whether that be glass, carbon fiber, PEI, or other materials. Now, as far as chamber temperature goes, you are going to want to use a chamber if you can. It will print in an open air printer, but if you can get 70 Celsius or above, it's going to help a lot with the overall strength and warping of the material. Now, for supports, you can use something like Aquatec X1 or Aquasys 120, even Aquasys 180 if you've got it on hand. Now, to give you a little teaser, if you had an HSE machine, then you would print this at 440 Celsius up to 500 millimeters per second. They're really, really insane machines. Check out visionminer.com slash HSE to find out more. We got a bunch of videos and things on that. By the way, speaking of videos, if you're liking these videos, please hit that like and subscribe and let us know in the comments below what you want to see next, what kind of test you think would be you know, valuable to give you a perspective of something you haven't seen anywhere else. So let's talk about some material specifications. For tensile strength, you're looking around 76 megapascals. For flexural strength, around 129 megapascals. And the notched eyes impact strength is around 3.4 kilojoules per meter squared. Now all the data sheets are available in our online store at visionminer.com slash data so you can find all the other juicy details there. But for now, let's check out some example parts. Here on the table, I've got a variety of parts printed in HTN. And frankly, half of these were printed on the HSE, but let's start with the sample bars. If you need to test this material or feel it in real life, see how rigid it is compared to other materials, we've got these sample bars available on our website and we'll send you some. Just hit us up and let us know or check out the site and you can buy them there. Uh, but very good if you wanna compare multiple materials for surface finish or rigidity, things like that. So we've got these, I'm gonna burn this and break it here in just a minute. Uh, but we've also got these which are uh, just, I mean, they're rods for some sort of robotics application or some sort of work holding. On the bottom here, you can see when they printed it, there isn't some sort of adhesive that uh, got very hot. Uh, it doesn't look like that on all the parts, I rest assured. Like this one, beautiful. Um, this is a jig. This is like a work holding jig. Uh, some sort of pipe holder, maybe for an exhaust or something like that, would have a top part that goes on here to hold whatever shape is going in here. And this might be used for a CMM fixture so they can measure a part afterwards with a you know, computer measuring device. Um, right here we've got a good example of a gear. Now this is great abrasion resistance and very, very good wear resistance. So it's great for things like gears that are going to be in contact over and over and over and over for years at a time. Uh, very good material for that, just like Delrin would be. Again, 
<laughs> if you want Delrin, this is the stuff you want. This is actually a vacuum mold or something like that. Actually, this could be a jig for just work holding, but works great for vacuum molds too. Now you probably want to use the HTN CF25 if you're doing vacuum molds, especially with higher temperature materials, but this works great as well if you want no electrical conductivity. The carbon fiber does add a little bit of that and we've got them on our store. By the way, this is the box for the 2.5 kilo and this is the box for the 750 gram spools. So right here, they come in these very, very nice metalized vacuum packed bags very very well packed you probably want to dry it when it's brand new if even if it is totally vacuum sealed just good practice to make sure it wasn't sitting out there's no moisture in that thing whatsoever anyway moving right along back to the parts this is kind of an interesting example because something like this would be very hard to machine you've got a square up here or it just be not not hard to machine but you wouldn't want to have to machine it it's going from a square to a circle the things you can do with 3D printing, squares and circles. <laughs> oh God, the jokes that could come along with that. Very good. Uh, you know, more bars and things like this. This is, here, I'm gonna just full bend. Uh, that's it's pretty, pretty darn strong, man. I'm telling you. Oh God, all right, good times. Now, a quick segue on tuning. As you'll notice over here, we've got five parts finished, followed by a final part. This is the progress of tuning. We started printing this part, we noticed up at the top, this is what was happening. It was getting all oozy, it was not looking good, it was a little too hot when it finally got up to this tip, and so we tried it again and we cut the part in the slicer, just drop it below the build plate and just tuned in this area so we could get the perfect settings. Now, this is the second rendition, looking a little bit better. Third rendition, even better. And then we removed the support structure from inside the hole and it printed even finer. And then finally we nailed it with this one and then proceeded to print the final jig. And that is the nature of things on open material systems. You're gonna have to go through a couple iterations, but this is a really good way to do it. You only tune in the difficult parts. You don't have to print the same part 10 times to get the settings perfect. You just take the most difficult area, make sure your settings are good for that, and then you can print the whole part. <clears throat> now we've also got this electronics enclosure, which we did in every other material. And as you can see, the details came out fantastic. Very good, very smooth surface finish. Uh, very, very nice. The overhangs are really good in these support areas. There's essentially no drooping that I can see. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but very good. Stuck to the build plate, great. And just a very, very nice part. We've also got the vases over here, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, and you just get a nice smooth finish. Now we did notice printing these vases that at certain areas, it would get a little bit droopy at the higher temperature. So we did have to make some adjustments and use some slicing, uh, some different levels of slicing with different settings throughout the part, a little more cooling fan up here, you know, uh, until we finally got it going as demonstrated by this part right here. <laughs> as you can tell, it was a little bit too hot and not enough cooling for this particular geometry when we were printing it. So once again, you gotta go through the motions and just try things out and figure it out and give it a shot and then try a different setting and do that and, and go and eventually end up with the perfect part. So yeah, it's very good. Awesome, all right, what else we got to go over? I think we're moving in to the breaking and burning portion of the video. So I'm just gonna move these puppies right over here, get these out of the way and get the sweet little Babco vice and of course safety first, get some glasses on just in case this stuff explodes, which it shouldn't. And I'm just gonna take this little sample bar right here, again, available on the website. I'm gonna stick it in this vise right down to the logo. And I'm just gonna pull back and we're gonna see how it breaks, if it shatters, if it explodes, if it bends, see what's gonna happen. I'm expecting it to bend and not shatter because it's nylon, but we'll see. That exploded, that went everywhere. That was, yes, okay, so this is much this is a bit more brittle than your uh, average soft nylon like your zip tie. <laughs> that was a good time. All right, so let's examine exactly what happened here. We've got very good layer fusion. I mean, this chunk looks like it completely just sheared off. I mean, 
if you look at that right there, I mean, that, that's not following layer lines at all. Yeah, that was definitely a close to isotropic part. And it broke into multiple, multiple pieces. Like, that was pretty intense. That was almost like Ultim 1010. This stuff is hard. This stuff is really good. Wow. Very rigid. Very, very structurally rigid. All right, moving right along into the next test, we've got the vase break. Now, as you can see here from this vase break, uh, just a preview. So, I'm just gonna take my thumbs, I'm gonna shove them into the vase, and we're gonna see what happens, how it breaks, how much deflection it's got, etc. Okay. Oh, there we go. We got some breakage. And boom. Whew. Yeah. Now, this is what I like to see. I like to see that breaking straight down the layer lines. Now, we did get to a weak spot down here and it broke across the layers and up here <clears throat> but overall it didn't exhibit a ton uh, or as much z layer weakness as we see in some of the other materials i'm just gonna go a little more oh oh that's weird interesting all right now this is much like the HTN CF25 where it basically gives you a bunch of little eggshells almost. It really, really shatters as opposed to like peeling away from itself on the layers. I mean, look at that. That's going right, right down straight through all the layers. Very nice. Wow. And then up at the top here, of course, you get good deflection without breaking. <laughs> and it just. Oh, dude, look at that. I mean, that's like an injection mold, man. Look at that. Look at how that broke. That's insane. You, that's really good. I'm happy with it. Wow. All right. Very cool. All right. Very nice. Well, it's time to break out the fire. You know what that means. I'll put this thing over here. And I'm going to whip out the handy dandy Bofa Print Pro 2 fume extractor. I like to use this for soldering and wood burning and anything else that's got fumes in the shop that I don't want to stink everything up with. All right, so we're going to start by burning a little bit of this vase. There's a piece here. There we go. Here's a piece. And it's super thin. So we're going to see what the open flame does to a super thin piece of HTN. Let's go. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and it's on fire. It's on fire. Self-extinguishing? Nope. Not yet. Oh, you know what? It went out. It went out. That's a good sign. Um, I don't believe this has actually the self-extinguishing properties like UL94V0 or anything like that, uh, but it didn't keep burning like some of the other nylons and other materials that we see. On here, see if it does the same thing. All right. We have ignition. It's burning, it's burning, it's burning. Does it have the fuel? All right, just put it out there. Now, obviously, you can play with it afterwards. This is dangerous, don't try this at home. If you do try this at home, be an adult. <laughs> We're all adults here. Wait, are we? I don't know. This is the internet. Whatever. Um, yeah. All right. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Let's do the solid bar because really we'll see a little bit different result with this thing. I'm going to start on the lettering just to see how it affects the lettering in open flame. And let's go. Not bad. As you can see, the letter started to melt a little bit. And so did the edge of the part. Not super terrible. Let's see what happens when we uh, go full send. And we have ignition. We are on fire. This is not, ooh, I mean, it, it almost looks like it wants to self-extinguish, but before I drip on too much. Oh yeah. All right, all right. 
definitely expanded around there. I remember in the HTN CF25, we saw it kind of poofed out. This did a similar effect where it expanded significantly. You could probably use a heat gun to make this stuff shiny, shinier. It's already pretty shiny though. Uh, all right, still soft, still bendable, but it's, it's gaining its structural rigidity back a little bit already. You can tell it's, it's sort of, it's behaving like a TPU right now, like a NinjaFlex or something. All right. All right. Not bad. Interesting. So, very cool. Once again, I cannot stress enough, this material is the best. Let me get this uh, bofa out of the way. This material, for everybody that's been, that's been asking over the last three, four years, what can I print? that's like Delrin or can I print Delrin? No, you should not print Delrin. It's toxic over a certain temperature. It's extremely, like frankly, it's just really hard to print and get anything other than a cylinder out. Uh, it's terrible. We did some experimenting with it. Don't do it. But if you want something that's got very similar properties, behaves the same, good abrasion resistance, chemical resistance, HTN, is the stuff for you. This also comes with a 25% carbon infill, which is separate. There's another video on that, go check that out. But for now, this stuff is great. Really enjoying it. The guys over at Ascentium are super helpful as well with information and anything you need in regards to their materials. They develop all this right here in the USA in Austin, Texas. So this is an American made polymer, American made machines, really cool stuff available at our store right now in stock shipping same day at visionminer.com slash materials. Definitely go check it out and be sure to check out our other comparison videos. We got a whole gamut of high performance materials for 3D printing that we've done the same exact tests on. So if you want to see more of that, check out our website or our YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.